the week. Hello, welcome to the program. I'm Nigel Freitas, filling in for Bridie Barry today. Ahead on the show, which network is winning in the crucial reality TV ratings battle? We'll have the best and worst performers from the latest sales figures for newspapers and magazines. And 10 gets the Winter Olympics right, but the cricket still up in the air. But first today, This Week News Limited has launched its new digital subscription model for its Sydney and Melbourne mastheads, the Daily Telegraph and the Herald Sun. It comes as Fairfax Media 2 prepares to charge readers for accessing the Age and the Sydney Morning Herald websites. So what's being offered to convince consumers to pay for online news content? Well, we're joined now by our co-host, James Manning, the editor and publisher of Media Week. James, welcome to the show Hello. as usual. Now, uh, with this launch of this model, what are the changes that, that readers are going to notice? Yeah, we covered this a bit briefly last week. It's actually up and live now at the Herald Sun and the Daily Telegraph, which is News Limited's uh, brands in S Sydney and Melbourne, their, their daily offerings. Um, so basically what you get, those readers now just get five free articles a week. After they've clicked five times, they'll get a uh, little window that asks them to register. Uh, when they do that, they'll get a further in Sydney, I think it's 15 free articles after that. In Melbourne, it's 10 and it's less in Melbourne because they've already had a bit of a sort of a paywall offering down there. And then once you hit that limit, you'll be asked to subscribe. Is that enough for, for consumers, that five or, or ten free articles? Yeah, I, I think it's... Well, newspapers have to do this, you know. They just can't keep giving it away for free. It's just not a business model that takes them anywhere. So it'll be fascinating to see how it goes. I'm guessing they've picked those limits because there's, you know, a, a few people who just go on and have a couple of clicks, but maybe there's a whole lot that reach that threshold pretty quickly, which, which across seven days, you know, five clicks isn't much. So it'd be great to see, you know... A lot of us go to websites and as soon as you hit that registration, you suddenly have that conversation with yourself, gee, do I, how much do I need this website? So if you need it, you do register. If not, well, then you move off and get your news somewhere else. Yeah, most people do go other places so mm. to see what the take-up there is. Now, I understand that um, News Corp are also ending free access to the sun as well as part of this. Yeah, in London. So it's really a, a, it's a, it's a worldwide thing they're doing now, moving their newspapers to this, you know, the Wall Street Journal's the, the model they like to put up as being the successful one. Obviously a very different market with the sun in the UK, but that's coming in a little later this year in August. But the sun will be looking at how we go down here, at the uh, the tabloid newspapers go down here with, with the trial. And talking about newspapers, why don't you talk us through some of the uh, circulation and uh, readership results for some of these papers. Sure, yeah. We've had some uh, readership for newspapers and circulation for the period ending uh, March March this year. It's sort of been bad news for most people. Uh, Daily Telegraph, uh, Sydney Morning Herald, Sydney Dailies, both down in double digits, if you like, in circulation and their readership figures. I can see there the tally. Uh, move on to the Sydney Morning Herald. Similar sort of bad news, both in circ and readership. Big papers in Melbourne, the Herald Sun, sort of the most read uh, daily newspaper in the country. Again, close to double digits in both readership and circulation. And at the age uh, for Fairfax, both down again. The only sort of bright spot, if you like, was at the uh, Financial Review, what their weekend edition. But in general, the, the national newspapers, the Australian and the Fin Review, held up a little bit better than those dailies, but still, they're both dropping. Um, you can see their circ and readership down around about 5% at the Australian and sort of a similar amount. So readership held up a little bit better at the Financial Review. Why did the, uh, looking at the Daily Telegraph, their circulation went down by 9% but readership increased by, by 12%. What's going on there? Yeah, it's, um, yeah, look, it's, it's a little bit uh, harder. I, I'd check that figure. I'm not sure if that's right. Their readership went up by that much but um, might be missing a minus sign there. But, right. but in general, that, that trend is down. There are, there are sort of uh, abnormal figures, if you like, like that, that we said the weekend fin had a little jump, but I doubt if it had sustained those figures over the long term. Now, when I see those figures, James, those look like a, a business in decline. But let's get the view now of the media buyers, and for that we're joined by James Heyer. He's a Chief Strategy Officer at media agency MEC Global. James, welcome to Media Week uh, this afternoon. Thank you. What are your thoughts on, on those kind of circulation figures, firstly? Well, I don't think anyone's surprised. Uh, it's become the new normal. I think we've got print decline fatigue. Um, the bad news is it's a trend. Um, the really bad news is it's not a long-term trend because it's not sustainable. If it continues long-term, it'll break. And 
advertisers will tire of press before their readers do. And given it's fueled by advertising money, it's goodbye press. The um, bright spot, I guess, is if you like, is the digital audience growth. Yeah. But um, I'm guessing you're probably feeling newspapers aren't managing that very well either. The sort of the, what they're offering, perhaps advertisers, and the way they're sort of, you know, the moves they're making in, in explaining what their, their strategy. So obviously, this is where consumers are going. We heard Martin Sorrell talking about this is where they are, but the ad dollars aren't following. Marketers may be slow to change, but they're also not stupid. We, we haven't seen too many offline brands built online. They're putting their marketing dollars where they think they can build their brands. And right now, online is not demonstrating the sort of ad formats that we need to build that top of the funnel demand creation. Let's talk about the, the West Australian. They continue to be one of the top performing papers in, in terms of readers. And this seems to be the fact that, or linked to the fact that they promote their print product quite hard and they also don't give away their, their content free online. Is that another an alternative model for some of these papers? Yeah, it's an alternative but it's not sustainable. So that they have you know, great local news that is harder to uh, obtain in other areas but the reality is all uh, press vehicles need to use this short time period to shore up their paper, take that revenue, explore online, get that business model fixed and they'll be going into the future with less revenue, but they'll have survived. Uh, the, the quandary to that is, you know, who I represent, the advertisers. So that uh, opportunity is for the publications to survive, but it's not the greatest opportunity for advertisers in terms of how do I build my brand in these areas when the formats are not conducive to doing that. And where are you seeing that opportunity in terms of building brand? Well, th this is where we are. We're going to have to work with the publishers change the way we look at digital we can't just start using you know things like banners which we've been using for you know well over a decade now and pretend that builds the brand what that does is demand fulfillment not demand creation almost since the show started i don't know a few four years ago or something we've been hearing about the readership works uh, an alternative method of uh, measuring the the audience for newspapers are we going to see something there soon and what are you hearing much about? Yeah, I feel like it's a movie trailer, like four <laughs> years in the making. Uh, no buzz, no excitement in the agency side and that's for that very reason. And James, give me a call when it actually gets into the market. Yeah, yeah, do, do you think that um, advertisers are, are getting any message that the publishers are, are working quite hard to keep their print business going alongside what they're doing in digital? So we can see what they're doing on the outside which is ripping the guts out of their business to try and keep it going forward my question is whether they're taking the right things out of their business so there's been a lot of discussion about content and editorial and in the end you know, they're not about paper and they're not about online they are about content that's the heart of their business and they've got to keep getting that right to survive uh, compact editions of the city morning herald and the age making any difference to advertisers well, 3% uh, growth supposedly. Let's look at the next round of CERC figures to see if it manages to, you know, stability is all we're looking for. And if the compacts manage to do that, there's nothing wrong with that format. We're extremely happy with it. And yeah, it will be great news and we'd greet that gladly. So if, if newspapers are, are in this particular decline, how would you characterise the market now with all these different opportunities? I've heard the term fragmented before. There's no doubt that it's fragmented. My concern is within that fragmentation are there still the same opportunities that, that we had previously. So it's not about consolidation and fragmentation. It's about do we have the formats we can use to help build brands for our advertising clients. I will come back to this topic in just a minute. But first, we're going to take a break. Uh, after that, we'll find out how magazines have fared in the latest sales and readership data. That's next.